Boom Supersonic aims to bring back the return of supersonic flight with its overture, with a first flight slated for 2026 and an entry into service expected in 2029 as per the company's timeline. It's ambitious, however the reality also is that the said company has many things it is yet to overcome, and in recent months, one could very easily argue that it has been catching up with the company. So, join us here on Globetrotting as we take a deep dive into Boom Supersonic and its problems. Do subscribe if you're new, we do have lots more analysis content to come. From engines to sustainable aviation fuel to certification, Boom's overture is plagued with issues, that's for sure. And let's begin with discussions surrounding the engine powering, probably one of the most talked about points around said overture. Boom's partnership with Rolls-Royce ended over a month ago, with the result being Rolls-Royce walking away from any potential production of an engine for the company, focusing themselves on other projects that they deem to be more beneficial. General Electric communicated with Lee Ham News and analysis, and said it was also not interested in providing an engine for Boom. Meanwhile, Pratt & Whitney have set their sights on other projects. Among other smaller manufacturers, the options Boom has available are incredibly far and few between now. Unveiling their updated overture, design at the 2022 Farnborough Air Show saw the type move from three engines to four, but with no engine announcement. Not having an engine built, seemingly designed, or a company agreed to work with, with a first flight slated in only four years, seems increasingly problematic, and with the production of the aircraft set to start soon, it's concerning. Boom's CEO Blake Scholl, however, continues to remain optimistic. Yes, they have challenges, but he says we'll see an announcement for engines later this year and maybe so. However, since early 2018, and even before, the CEO reiterated that an engine announcement was moments away, and something they thought would be relatively easy. So, now we're in the closing stages of 2022, and it's been radio silence. Without an engine, a plane does not exist, as best described by the reputable air current. Certification is the next focus. The industry has been plagued in recent years with delays to aircraft types, from problems emerging with said plane to just a more thorough approach to the process, this being for both Airbus and Boeing aircraft. Now they are two proven aircraft manufacturers. Boom, however, is unproven, and they're seeking a certification timeline that seems unthinkable for certifying an all-new aircraft, technology, and so forth that the company aims to implement, to even say getting very simply engines that don't exist approved as well. There are many questions, and with the clock ticking for an entry into service later this decade, well, you can definitely imagine how many more doubters are being proven right. Sustainable aviation fuel. Having had the opportunity to speak with those inside the industry and those even in marketing, getting the wider public to interact with content surrounding SAF has always been a challenge. However, for Boom, SAF is so incredibly important, they're actually aiming to have their aircraft run solely on sustainable fuel. And therein lies why it's become such a talked about topic with Boom for all the wrong reasons. Following reports, there are many people concerned with Boom's goals and claims. They were outright rejected by incredibly important governing bodies who did not believe Boom's intention would bring any good nor be plausible. Supersonic transporters and sustainable fuels were given a big no and said that they don't go together. You can obviously imagine, despite it being already given a no, sourcing the amount of sustainable fuel necessary when Overture will burn so much at such speeds is a problem in itself, especially if we're talking about the demand that the CEO and co have forecasted, which there in itself has seemed to many ludicrous at best. Thousands of overtures, according to the company, that's what we'll be eventually seeing. Now, of course, it'd be fantastic to see the return of supersonic travel in all its glory, in also a sustainable manner, reducing speeds and for $100 a ticket as stated eventually by the CEO himself. But it is unrealistic. According to accurate market forecasts and also demand, this wouldn't happen. And again, even if Boom were able to reach their ideal order target, they'd need to overcome so much, like getting their XB1 demonstrator in the air. It has been noted that this year we should see their baby Boom as it's known fly. However, this is also what we've heard for many years now, and there's been no movement on the station other than hearing very minute details. 
This year has though been filled with strategic partnerships for an aircraft that is yet to exist. Encouraging that so many partnerships have been forged, but the reasoning behind them needs to be examined a little bit more. Funding is a huge problem for any startups. Securing that additional money to get an idea to a reality is always so important and finding ways to get new investors, well therein lies a challenge. And for Boom and their overture, the money they require to build such a plane, get it certified, produce it at a mass scale and so much more, they don't have. And the startling thing is, they don't have anywhere near the amount. Strategic partnerships are a great way to turn investors' heads and get them to put a cash injection in. But with the reality of Boom being billions off the target deemed required by Bloomberg analysts, you can imagine just how many issues there are. The lump sum of investor money can only get them so far, and when investors begin to pull the plug and don't see the company as feasible, it'll go under. Just like we've seen many projects do before, especially in the supersonic space, which is a very tough nut to crack. To many people, the overture will never fly. The company is just plodding along and will eventually cease to exist. According to Boom, of course, they're on track and encouraged by the future while though ignoring specific issues raised by declining to comment. On the off chance that Boom can pull through and we see their overture fly by 2029, well the next era of travel will arrive with the return of supersonic flights with United, American and Japan Airlines at the moment, all three airlines having invested, and they'll be likely therefore the joint first to fly the overture. Despite all the issues we see with Boom Supersonic and their overture, sometimes you do have to give credit for innovation where it is due. The company is doing their best to bring back an idea and a concept that flew many, many decades ago in a better manner. The problem is, a lot of their expectations are unrealistic and targets that they can't reach. What are your thoughts on what we've discussed here today on Globetrotting? Will the Overture ever fly? And do you believe the program has problems? If so, what are they? And what are your thoughts on them? Thanks very much for watching. Do take care. Do also be safe. And we'll see you next time for another video here on Globetrotting.